Hey, it's Tafty from Tafty's Home for Wayward Guitars. We're going to take a little bit of a break from neck building today uh, because I've decided to change some stuff. Um, I figured the worst thing I could do at this late hour is decide to bind it. So that's what I did. I'm going to do I'm going to bind it. But I have to wait for some stuff to come before I can do that. So we're going to hold off on that for this week. Which leads us to bodywork. Come on back. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is probably something that's not featured in a lot of videos. Um, first thing we have to do is a little bit of design. I'm going to start with kind of a jazz master thing going on here. Well, this is actually a jazz master template. But once I get this traced out onto my body blank, I'm going to alter it and make it a little, I don't know, a little more fun. I haven't quite decided exactly what I'm going to change about it. I'm just going to let it go. Uh, my creative process is probably a lot like everybody else's. Um, at least I hope I'm not the only one. But I try to get comfortable, get myself a drink, take off my shoes, invoke the muse, and, uh, and hopefully away I go. All right, so there's a couple of things we get to do to, uh, to get started. The first one is to get a center line. This body blank is 14 and a half inches wide, so I'll mark it seven and a quarter. Connect those with my straight edge. All right, that was the easy part. Now one quick thing that I don't like about these cheaper templates is that the center lines that they give you don't carry over onto the sides or onto the back. That's unfortunate. It forces you to kind of eyeball the center line from the template to your, uh, to your body blank. So what I do is I put my square on my template. And I carry that center line right down the center, top and bottom. And I won't have to eyeball anything. Way easier. Boom. So now that I have my center line marked, uh, I'm going to go ahead and outline this body. Then I can decide on the changes I'm going to make. Here we go. That should do it. So what I'm thinking here is to make the Jazz Master a little bit, well, more metal. And nothing says metal more than a couple of horns up at the uh, upper bouts. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to drop that down. I'm also going to drop down the neck joint carry this angle back down maybe an inch and that's where I'll get my horns from. So there we are, there's our inch. There's our 62 degree angle. And there is our new profile. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use that to make the horns. I think before I do that, I should bring my neck pocket down so I know where I have to start and stop. So I use the other template to figure out where the bottom of my neck pocket was, move that down an inch, just like I did with everything else. So those are my absolute final points where uh, I can bring the horns into. And just in case you're wondering, I really don't have shoes on. So I think I know what the problem is, why I'm having such an issue with this upper horn. I'm putting the point in kind of the flat part of the transition. That's why it doesn't look at all like this bottom one, which I really like. So I think I'm going to take the top of this and extend it around so that it comes to more of a point instead of just being on the flat part of the upper horn. I think that'll work. Let's see what that looks like with the lines gone. Yes. Yes. So the other part of the geometry I got to work out is I moved the top of the neck pocket down an inch. So now I have to take that and work it into this curve. All right, so I was able to recreate kind of what was going on with the other neck pocket um, on, the, on the lower boat, uh, lower horn. It's hard to figure which is upper and which is lower when you're looking at it straight on. So I've got that rebuilt and I'm really happy with it. So now all I gotta do is get this to the point where I'm happy with that. Well, one thing's for sure, it's not a Jazz Master anymore. All right, so what we've got here is a jazz master with, for lack of a better description, SG horns. Because why not?
I mean, don't we all think that jazz masters have to be a little more metal? All right, I'll get the bandsaw set up and we'll start to cut this thing out. Uh, I have to put my shoes back on first. So I admit this is going to be a bit of a challenge to cut this out on the Oriobi here, but I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to take off small pieces. I think that'll help me out. One of these days I'm going to get a real bandsaw. Just not today. So I'm going to bring it over to the spindle sander and see if I can't clean up these, the insides of these horns. All right, I got my 80 grit paper on here and I'm ready to try to clean up these lines a little. So what I was going to do was uh, go ahead and shape the top of this since it's, you know, custom, I can't follow any, follow any templates. I was going to just shape the top of it and then put the template on, bring it to the router table and get the rest of this. But things are going so well on the spindle sander that I think I'm just going to use it. Here's the best part about this spindle sander. Now that I've got this shaped out, what I want to do is lay out the rest of the body. That is, get the pickup routes in. Uh, I'm not going to do the neck pocket yet until I finish that neck, and I'm actually going to use that neck as my template. I'll show you that when we get to it. What I'm going to do is use this old, uh, I believe it's like a, some kind of a Telecaster. But for whatever reason, It has humbucker rods in it. It's a very aggressive telecaster. So, with it being 25 and a half inch scale, which is also what our guitar is going to be, I am going to just go ahead and use it to lay out the pickups. 
beauty. Then I'm just going to double check where the bridge goes and just make sure that, uh, that we have everything where it needs to be. So I'm going to take this Telecaster neck template and I am going to clamp it onto my body block. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not marking out for my bridge right now. I'm just making sure I have enough room for it. Whoa. That looks like a guitar. My tape. And I think I have the bridge I'm gonna use. We'll see. So, we know it's 25 and a half inch scale. So we know from the nut down to the saddles, well, should be about 25 and a half inches. That would put us about here. So I was gonna do a stop bar tailpiece, tunematic kind of thing, but I have this bridge and it's pretty cool. I bought it for another project, didn't use it. But uh, it's a string through the body, so that'll be fun. We'll do that. All right, let's see if that bridge works. You wanna make sure that your bridge is set in about the middle of the travel, as far as the saddles go. That's about where this is. So I've got plenty of adjustment in both directions. That's perfect. It's a good spacing for those humbuckers. I think that's a go. Let's run them out. So here we are over at the drill press. I'm going to uh, hog out these holes with the Forstner bit. Portion of it. I'm going to hog these holes out as much as I can and then hit it with the router. Oh, really cool trick I saw. I can't take credit for it, but I'll certainly show it. These pickup routes have to be 13 16 inches deep for a fender. How do I know that? Because that's what Stu Max says. It's right there. So, what I do is I mark 13 sixteenths on the outside of my body blank. That way I can match it up with the bottom of my drill bit, set my stop, and away I go. I have 13 sixteenths marked out on my body yet. I bring my drill bit right down to that. Set my stop. And there it is. I also want to thank you guys in the comments. Comments are awesome. Um, I honestly didn't think anyone was going to comment on my videos. It's, I guess it's a confidence thing. Uh, thanks for the help with the drill press. I'm, I've ordered the belt. I'm going to put a new belt on it. So, yeah, it's going to be a little shaky right now. But, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Awesome stuff. Does it just mean it does ash smell like popcorn when you're drilling into it? Now I'm hungry. I mean, let me know if it's not supposed to smell like popcorn, because otherwise I get something really wrong with my body blanket.
I'm going to switch it over to a smaller bit, take out a little bit more material. Well, that was close. For some reason, my depth stop loosened up, and uh, good thing I realized it. <laughs> well, we got a hole in the back of the guitar. It's all good, though. Let's keep going. All right, I've got my template. I've got my body blank, I've got my router, my mask. I think I'm good to go. Let's get this done. So I've gone uh, probably about three quarters of an inch or so deep. I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I can drop my bit far enough. I might have to take the template off to finish out the rest of it. Either way, we're going to go to full depth. All right, I had to take the template off in order to reach the full depth. Uh, remember that mark that I had made on the side for the drill press? I'm going to use that same mark to set the depth of uh, of the router bit. Here's something. Remember how my depth stop had slipped on me over on the drill press. You can see the two little eyeballs peeking out that the Forstner bit made. I mean, is it going to make any kind of difference? No, of course not. Uh, they're going to be underneath the pickups. No one will ever see it. But just goes to show you got to be careful. So the last thing I'm going to do today before we wrap up this video is I'm going to rough out the control cavity. I have a pretty good idea of what shape I'm going to use. I only have a few templates for it anyway. Uh, but these control cavity templates are amazing. Now let me bring you this. So, Potfin Guitars up in the Great White North of Canada makes these templates. And honestly, when you buy a control cavity template from them, you get, obviously, the hole you have to hog out. He gives you another template that has two parts. After you run around the hole for the actual uh, control cavity, you then take this template and it gives you the 1 8 lip all the way around so that your cover can sit inside nice and flush. Then the third part is the template for the actual cover and the holes. It's complete. You don't need anything else. So Potfin Guitars, I'll throw a link down below for that. He's amazing. He'll build anything you want. That's where I get my neck templates with the funky headstocks and different scale lengths and neck pockets. We are about to make a tremendous mess. Get more routing and uh, we're done roughing out the body. All right, I've got my template uh, masking tape and super glued on. And I guess the only thing left to do is route it. Oh, clamp it down first.
So, we have a body with uh, a couple of eyes poking out. Whatever. Humbucker routes, neck pocket laid out, but not cut until I get my neck done. That's important. That's why you always build the neck first, because you can make the body to fit it. You can't usually go the other way around. Anyway, control cavity is 90% there. What do you think of the body shape? Let me know. Um, my take on a Jazzmaster. So it's still offset. It's still basically the size and shape of a Jazz, except uh, we've got some horns. Let me know. I kind of like it. Might end up a keeper. All right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to end the video there because, oh, we've got a body. So thank you guys for joining me today. As usual, uh, check me out on Instagram, at Tafty's Guitars. Check me out on Facebook, at Tafty's Guitars. Check me out on TikTok, also, at Tafty's Guitars. We have a body. What do you think of it? Pretty cool, huh? I kind of like it. It's uh, got horns. All right. Uh, please, please like and subscribe. I'm going to do my best to do one video a week. Uh, try and get it out there for you guys. I'm going to have to wrap this up now because my camera's about to die. All right. Hey, thank you.